Thank you for coming here. I appreciate it. It's evening and everybody left what they have and they come here. It's very nice of you. Why are we doing this lecture? Usually when you're going to the regular health system, um, nobody needs to explain you anything. You know what you're going to do. You're going, you put your card in for your insurance company, whatever Kupat Holim it is, and you know the procedures there. And you have an illness, disease, pain, or fear, or anxiety. You go to the doctor, he sees you for about four minutes. He <laughs> extrapolate what's wrong. Yeah, for, and, then, and then you get um, a prescription. You go and get the prescription whenever you get it. And you deal with that type of illness. But that's not the case here. So illness is, is a different story. Um, where all of you, or almost all of you, were born, for example? Hospital. So from a hospital, most of people that grew up here knows that you're going, the next step, you're going to Tipat Chalav. You know, the nursery for kids, okay? And then the same system running that. And from Tipat Chalav, you're going to Kupat Cholim, the same system running it. So you are born into a system that teach you and brand you into that system. Anything that you have, the solution is to cover that, to stop that, to erase it, to take it off, to numb it. Okay, that's what's happening in this system, which is okay. That's the way that that system knows how to work. So not most, but all people are used to that. So it's very obvious to them. You have, they have a problem, the mother, wherever the mother took them, they're going when the adults themselves. And then they're taking the children. Here, that's not the case. You're coming in here, we're going through a few other things also, including that. And we want to offer you something else. So what I did, when I went first to become a veterinarian. <laughs> that's what I went to study. And once I understood, I worked with veterinarians for about two years, and I understood that veterinarian, I'm not going to be even though I like animals. Um, and then I went to med school, where I met my wife, and I went, med school in the United States are four years and then another four years. So you're doing first four and then four. So when I was about three to seven months before finishing the first part of four years, uh, my wife introduced me to her uh, brother-in-law, which is a chiropractor. So after I heard and understood the philosophy of that, I liked that, and I changed my major from medicine to chiropractic. Very short time before the first four years was when finished. Was that? When? when was that? That was um, 80, 89. 89, I, stopped, I finished the first four years, and then I went to chiropractic school. And then I became a chiropractor. <clears throat> and then when I came here and I started working here, I realized <clears throat> that that's a great profession. However, if I want to work with people on any subject of health and any subject of the human being, being a chiropractor is not enough. Because you need to deal with that. If you have one tool, if you have only a hammer as a tool, everybody will step into your office have to be a nail. <laughs> if you like it or not, that's the case. And I, I thought that that's a very limiting factor, even though chiropractic is one of the greatest professions on earth, health professions. So then, slowly, slowly, I start gearing myself toward developing what I call the next level of human health provider or doctor. And slowly, slowly, I got to the point where I developed what it's called the ultimate medicine, where medicine, or first of all, the doctor, needs to be at least five doctors in one. At least five doctors in one. Because the human being is extremely, extremely, and I'll say it again, extremely complex. It's not only the vertebras, it's not only your medications, it's not only your psyche, it's not only your energy, and it's not only your food. It's all together at a minimum. And if you're not all five of that together, 
How can you become a doctor? How can you become a health provider? Because anybody will come to you, you'll miss a few other sections of his health or his needs, right? So, um, these are a couple of books that I wrote. One of them is The Human Code, where I'm talking about the relationship between patients and doctors, treaters and, and patients, where I'm putting six codes, which, which I think, I put it very likely in this book. These codes are at minimum for any doctor in the world, or any nurse, any doctor, any treater in the world. That's, that's a, a, a book I wrote. The other one is The Secrets of Love, where Kabbalah, or the Jewish, Jewish, Jewish mysticism, meets science. We, I wrote it with a rabbi. I have coming a book now, right now, which is coming in English, is Ultimate Medicine, and a couple of more uh, already uh, written, and they are on their way. They're going to come in Hebrew, then in English. We need to think about Arabic. And, um, but that's, that's what's happening right now. Uh, a couple of more books with, with, uh, with I'm writing, right now is a book that was written with me and uh, two other doctors and a rabbi. We wrote a book, we wrote a book. it's called uh, Genesis, the Eternal uh, Sequence. It can be a very interesting book to read. It's, going, it's coming out in Hebrew and in English. And um, what do I miss? Uh, yeah, that's, that's what's happening right now. We have another book here about uh, psychology and um, he's writing about psychology from the mysticism and I'm writing about it from the quantum mind medicine. That's where I'm writing, where I'm writing. So altogether it's like eight books that are coming, five of minds, three mix. So we are pushing that. We're pushing that idea more and more and more. Okay. So we're talking about the five pillars of medicine. And the first pillar, and the first pillar is the importance of chiropractic, osteopathic, and all type of medicine that dealing with this musculoskeletal system. A doctor cannot be a doctor by understanding the spinal column, the joints, and the nervous system. He can be something, but not a doctor. I'm always giving this little story where this guy came to us with severe stomach pain. Severe. For one month, 30 days, severe stomach pain. And he was um, being checked from inside out with all what was that medicine, that time medicine to offer him, and they found nothing is wrong with his digestive system and his stomach. Nothing. And so he been through all the doctors, and the end he ended up with me. He said, what do I have to lose? I heard about you, I'm coming. So I sat with him and I said, listen, it doesn't make any sense that you have such a severe pain. He couldn't eat, couldn't drink, couldn't do a lot of things. He ate and drank by force, but he was, he was 24 hours in pain. And it went on, it got stronger and stronger all the time. That was going on for one month. So I went through investigation of his food and his vitamins and minerals and pills and whatever, whatever, food history, um, gutty, uh, leaky gut and, 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 and allergies and nothing. And then we examined him, nothing. He said to him, very simple thing. What happened to you one day, two days, a week, two weeks, a month before that thing happened to you? He said, nothing. I said, no way. Something happened to you. I said, nothing. I swear to you, nothing happened to me. I said, no way, no way. There's no such a thing. In the end, he tells me, ah, something, but I don't think it's connected. I said, what? He said, I rolled with my car for about five times. Oh. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. I said, okay, that explains it. We I checked his spine differently this time, sent him to do x-rays, and we found out two major vertebras moved within his thorax, his mid-back, very badly. Nobody took a look at that. When we fixed that, his stomach pain went to zero 
after about a month to zero forever. That was it. Now, he'd been through MRIs and endoscopes and, and gastroscopes, and they didn't find anything because they looked at the end result. So if you don't understand it, you don't understand the spine, at least basically to see the connection, you, you miss out as a doctor, okay, or a treater of any kind. You need to understand, where is our brain and the spinal cord goes from our brain as an extension of the brain. And the nerves are coming out of the spine, they're going to every part and system of your body. So if, if your spine will be affected one way or another and you're not going to fix it, it's possible that your internal organs and your system will be lacking or in pathology, in sickness, illness, pain. That's why the importance of chiropractic, osteopathy, or other uh, types of medicine for a doctor to understand and become when he's becoming a doctor. Next. The next one is conventional medicine. How important is conventional medicine? Very important. If somebody thinks that conventional medicine is outdated, they're wrong. Conventional medicine is the king and the queen of emergency medicine. They're, going, they're doing the best more than anybody else in the world in this type of medicine. So when you have an emergency of any kind, this is the place to go. So do I do emergency medicine? I don't. Do I understand when I need to send somebody out for emergency medicine? Yes, I do. If I don't know that, you cannot become a doctor. Okay? So you don't need to deal with that emergency, but you need to know when to send it out. So I had this five-year-old kid coming to my office. I was working in Maccabi Insurance Company. <clears throat> and. Um, uh, a couple of parents coming with a five-year-old with severe asthma attack, severe. And they said to me, we heard your name, we're coming here from a different Kupat Cholim, but we want it private, but we want, your, uh, we, we, we want you to heal our boy. I said, okay, let's examine the boy. I see the boy is in severe attack, he's over 60 breaths a minute, he needs to be in the hospital immediately before a heart attack. He's a five-year-old. I said to him, guys, immediately to emergency room, two seconds to emergency room. Now, no, but we heard that you can help our son. I said, yeah, emergency room. Then you come back to me. So they went to emergency room. He was there for a day or two. He got out of the emergency situation. He came back to me, and we took care of the asthma forever. He did very well. We followed them many over the years. He had none, not one attack of asthma. Or if he had one, it was almost nothing, and it was without medications and anything else. So very important to know. I had here people coming to me here where they're having trouble with their spine that was an emergency and they didn't understand that. We had to send them out. So we need, a doctor needs to know all that medicine to know when to send their patients out for whatever need to be done. I had this patient came to me within like a month or two from no scoliosis to severe scoliosis. Scoliosis is where your spine is like that. In two months or a month from straight spine, no pain, to severe scoliosis. I said to myself, it's not coming from nothing. If it's in that short time, something is going on. So I, when I examined him, he had this, a big, large tumor here. And the tumor went toward the spine, and the spine went toward here. And immediately, we sent him out to Tel Shomer. At that point, his wife was a personnel there. Within a day or two, he had surgery. They took it out. They cleaned it. He straight up immediately. And he was, and he was OK. So need to understand conventional medicine. Conventional medicine is very, very important. So a doctor needs to understand that part of ultimate medicine. Next medicine, biochemistry, biochem. So we are made out of 
many, many elements. And we need to understand how to eat, what to eat, when to eat, how much to eat. If it's right for us, if it's harming us, if it's, if it's giving us, if it's contributing for disease or it's taking away disease. I get here patients coming from Kupat Cholim or Bet Cholim, hospitals, with conditions. For example, they're coming out after cancer. And then I see that the dietary plans that they're giving to them, I laugh. It's terrible. They give him the same foods that will bring him back to oncology. Exactly that. I had here a girl coming from, from Hadassah Hospital after being seven months under psychiatric care for bulimia anorexia. And when she came here with the dietary recommendations, I was sure that they're pulling my leg, that they're laughing, that they're making fun for me. And I said, and they said, no, 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 that, that's, that's the list we got every day. I said, that will drive her crazy. And we'll put her back from where she came. It will never work. And slowly, slowly, we had to change it because she was addicted to those terrible foods that they gave her. And we had to work with that slowly, slowly, more and more until she got balanced, a little bit balanced, and then more and more and more, and not going back to the same place, which is not so fun there. So, yes, it's very important that we study that, we understand it through blood tests, through a lot of learning, because it's very, very complex. Human being is a complex thing. More than we doctors can figure out most of the times. So if you only have one tool, it's not enough. So that's the second tool. We go into the third tool. By the way, up to the year of 2017, food was the biggest expense in the Western world. From 2017 on, medications became the biggest expense in the Western world. Guys, okay? Somebody doesn't do his work or doing a very good job on that side. Okay? Next one. Here's a question for you. Immediate psychology. Here's a question for you. How much of our illness, sickness, problems are coming from our souls, from our psyche? How much, in your opinion? <laughs> most of it. So if it's most of it, is your doctor need to be a good psychologist? Yes. Yes. You need to be a good psychologist now, but not type of psychology that you need to sit for hours, for months and weeks, and, and uh, months and, and years, but immediate psychology, which means that's what I developed. I developed that notion where you sit with a person, very short time, you're going in depth in short time to what he's sitting on. What is this thorn? The hidden one and the seeing one. And then you sit with them between one time to four times. Between 20 minutes or 30 minutes, you serve them in that side of the psychology. And then you do other things with them to enhance it. But you're not continuing and continuing and continuing and continuing the same thing because that takes you back to the same traumas, takes you back to the same problems, and you're not getting out of it. And you're doing it for years. I have people here who did it for 15 years before they came here. So I developed that thing that is called immediate psychology. I do it with my patients, all of them, one by one. Some more than others, some none at all, and some a little bit. Immediate psychology, a doctor needs to understand that. Even, even if it's a surgeon, before he puts somebody into surgery, and after he's coming out of surgery, on and on and on. And if to let them know that he has that type of disease that is bad, how you say it, how you deal with them, how you prepare him, instead of coming and saying, um, I have good news for you and bad news for you. The bad news is that you have cancer and you have six weeks to live. So the patient says, 
So what is the good news? He said, you also have Alzheimer. <laughs> so you're not going to remember that. So you're okay. That's a joke. Oh, that's my wife picked. She thought it was cute. I think Freud would like that. <laughs> Zygmunt. Okay, and then we're coming to the last medicine which I developed from the ultimate medicine that is called quantum mind medicine. And we're going to go to that. Most of that, actually most of what we're doing, we're going to go into that. So what are we, ah, oh, beautiful, Kodakavod. They, they changed it from Hebrew. It was in Hebrew. They did it in the English. Great. Thank you. Thank you. So what are we made of, guys? What are we made of? Water. Minerals. Cells. Atoms. Perfect. So first, not to be smart, Alex, we are a body. We're using a body as a vehicle in this world to operate, right? Yes. And the body is made out of what? Everybody that said what they said, they said right. So the body is made out of systems. Breathing system, blood system, digestion system, nervous system, musculoskeletal system. It's systems, systems, systems. And the systems are talking with each other. What is the system made out of? Particles, close. Organs. Okay, so the organs are creating the systems and they have very particular um, a purpose, right? Each organ have a very different or a purpose, but they're working together, right? What are the organs made out of? Tissue, absolutely. Are all the tissues the same? No. no. You have heart tissue and liver tissue and lung tissue and uh, muscle tissue and nerve tissue it's, and bone tissue. It's all different tissues, right? And they have all different purposes. But yet still, they're working all together, right? Because it's systems. What are the tissues made out of? Blood. Also? Tissues made out of? Cells. Are all the cells are the same? No. no. Are the all cells have the same purpose? No. no. Each one is doing something else. And they're very specific. It's very important. And what are the cells made out of? Molecules. molecules. Are all the cells made from the same molecules? No. no. So what are the cells? Oh, by the way. So, by the way, how many cells are building one person? Millions? Millions. Trillions. 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 How much? How many trillions? How much you want in your bank account? In your bank account, how many trillions do you want? <laughs> so give this number. So there is the people, the, the, the big ones saying between 50 trillion to 100 trillion cells building one person. Okay? And the trillion cells. What builds the molecules? Atoms. Atoms. What build the atoms? Exactly. Electrons, protons, neutrons, quarks. So these are subatoms, right? And, and various subatoms. Sub That's where the quantum notion is coming in. Now, how many atoms? Building one cell in the human body. One cell in the human body. How many atoms? About. How many? Billions, Billions go up. Trillions. Trillions. 100 trillion atoms building one cell and 100 trillion cells building a human body. That's what we built. It's crazy. Now. So the atom, now what I'm telling you here is very, um, I'm putting it in very simple ways just to give an idea. It's not exactly the way it's, that it's portrayed there, okay? It's very simple. 
the atom is made out of how much material? How much material, physical material, makes the atom? What is the percentage of it? Tiny. Tiny. Yes, true. How much? Zero point twelve zero is one percent material, and that's the proton. Okay, positively charged proton. Proton. Okay. So how much is energy space that are found within an atom? Energy space and information. That's how much an atom possess. So if that's the case, how much of you is a physical material and how much is it is space, energy, and information? How much? Exactly. We are made out of mostly energy that carries information and space. We're empty. And yet, and yet, because we are living in a physical world, per se, per se, and we are made out of atoms that is mostly energy, how is it that we see you, feel you, okay, and touch you? How is it? Because of what? Waves. Say it again? Waves. Waves. Very good. So what atoms are doing? They're moving very fast. So, next. So, next. Thank you. So if we're taking this propeller of an airplane, how much material is it within that circle? Almost like what, 2% material? Something like that? So I can put my hands and my legs through all the holes, right? When, but when it starts moving, as fast as they move, it's become a wall, isn't it? Yeah. So in your body, your atoms are not all the same atoms. That's why you have soft tissue and hard tissue, right? Bones, teeth, they are different molecules and they're spinning in a different rate or different vibration. So they are what we call vibrational frequency. They're vibrating, but they have different frequency to the vibration, right? That's why our tissues are different. That's why we feel that we are material, but actually we're not. We're absolutely not. We're atoms in motion. That's what we are. So let, why I cannot go through a wall, even if, if I'm, a, if I'm uh, uh, only atom, atoms that have energy in space, why can I go through a wall? Because there'll be, um, there'll be a, a physical uh, gradients of uh, positive, positive um, electricity that will not allow it. So that will feel like physical, something physical holds something physical. It's not going to allow it. Okay. Yes. There you go. Yes, please. So because, because that information and energy and space are in motion, it becomes, it looks like physical. Okay? So if you saw that, that when it's standing, you can put your hands through. But if it's rotating very fast, if you go to an airplane, can you put your hand through it? It's not going to cut your hand. You're not, it's like a wall. You cannot even shoot a bullet through it. But it's nothing. It's three wings or two wings. But they're moving so fast, it becomes like a wall. It's an illusion. It's an illusion. We're the same. Okay? So I want to show you how our bodies are being formed through vibrational frequency. Vibrational frequency, please. So activate it. Yeah, you have that's how so play. This is this is actually what I want to show you here. And then did you skip it? Okay. What I want to show you here that actually we are made of, we are pixels. Then added more and more and more and more and more. Cells to cells to cells to cells to cells to cells to become a person. And all these cells carry information, energy, and space. Next. Maybe I'm wrong. Now, 
So, לא, דילגת על אחד שלם, אתה צריכה לחזור. 